so you've taken part in multiple championships right multiple uh, competitions etc you've taken part in commonwealth in youth uh, in youth olympics uh, even the korean world cup can you walk me through one of those uh, can you walk me through one uh, competition which you which you felt like which was in your mind like the hardest or i don't know due to various reasons you felt like you were not prepared and you had to kind of go through uh, and you still made it or due to various reasons i don't know like any reason you found that particular championship maybe the commonwealth games maybe the korean world cup last year or any championship which you felt uh, was very difficult and why did you kind of feel that well uh, one of the hardest i felt uh, was commonwealth games it was not because i was under under prepared or something but uh, it was uh, uh for me it was a first time experience that i am going to play some kind of games uh i i never par- participated in any games and i knew that how big it is and it's commonwealth games and uh it was big and overwhelming feeling for me but at the same time i knew that uh, the only thing i had to do is be in my routine and uh, just play how i played so when i went to australia and uh, the whole game village it was so big and every day it was some kind of new experience and i was like i was uh, like so overwhelmed with everyone and i'm seeing like uh, different sports and every uh, uh, athlete like top level athletes are, are there with me and i'm going to play with them at the same games it was such a such an amazing feeling and also the opening ceremony was brilliant so everything was so good that it was very easy to get distracted so i knew that from very first that uh, I, the only thing that i have to be till my match is over is focused focus for my match and the reason that i am there and what i want to do there so uh, the only thing that was in my mind is like I, i was waiting for my match day and i was preparing for it though my qualification didn't went so good as i hoped it would be but uh, the finals was very good and uh, i was very close to win the gold and i missed it on the last shot because <laughs> i thought that the finals was over and i left my position but it was a tie shot so <laughs> it was a big learning for me do you still and get, uh, do you still get dreams about it i mean do you still get dreams about it about you uh, about that day when you know you said you missed it at the last uh, at the last moment right so do you still have dreams or nightmares where you are waking up at 4 in the morning uh, thinking oh shit i should have maybe uh, you know done that shot properly do you do you feel that or well uh, not really not like nightmare because i didn't have had any hope for medal at the first games to be very honest i was just focusing on performing my best and um, i was very happy that i won silver medal though i was very close to gold but it's not a nightmare for me it's a learning definitely and um, i am just waiting for the next uh, commonwealth games so that i can change the medal color there so i mean uh, it feels like um, uh, the commonwealth games you're talking about you're talking about the 2018 one so before before that how many competitions did you kind of take part in before that i think i uh, played three junior internationals and one senior world cup so four internationals all together okay mm-hmm. yeah i mean it seems like uh, i mean it uh, the way you were uh, the the way you were talking about it seemed like for you it was like a like going to australia was like a culture shock you know seeing all these uh, you know the, the huge infrastructure um the change in climate maybe uh, the change the looking at other players and other games how much uh, was that like a big factor for you like i mean looking at all these participants from various countries and was that like your first time uh, kind of experiencing all that and was that like a huge factor in why you felt those game that particular um, you know that particular year uh, commonwealth to be different well it was like a dream come true because i have always dreamt 
to be in the games village and you know i have seen it in the olympics and i've seen pictures and all so i i won't say that it was like olympics olympics is very different but it was something which is very close to olympics so it, it was like i'm leaving my dream right at the moment so it was very uh, touchy and it was very big for me how much do you travel in a year how much do i travel oh i have lost count <laughs> I, i have completely lost count you can uh, like if i count only the international then uh four, four to five times in a year to obviously and i have lost count for the domestic <laughs> uh, do you i mean do you like traveling or do you feel homesick when you travel uh, are you one of those independent types where you know you love going going to new places exploring new cities or uh, you hate traveling and you know you just want to come back i i just i just hate the big layover between my flights other than that i love traveling what city have you i mean have you not been yet where you would like to visit uh there are so many to be very honest but uh one has to be uh paris definitely and uh i want to go to spain as well and uh, there there's so many places but you know in every country uh i shooting doesn't have matches there so but in paris there is a, a, obviously the olympics is going to happen so that's the only focus for me right now to go to paris <laughs> I think uh, I think you really want to do that Europe trip I think uh, you mentioned two European cities uh, Paris and Spain so I think for you a Europe tour Europe tour is like a Europe tour is long overdue I think for you Do you get to uh, I mean when you're when you're visiting these different countries do you get to I don't know have fun in the sense that do you have time to like visit the city have fun with your teammates or do you have like a tight schedule where you know you have to practice and then again compete and then come back and i don't know if you lose you'll be depressed and you won't feel like going and i don't know man so how is it for you do you get time to visit and all that e- yes but it it very much depends on our schedule when my matches when my matches getting over and if even i am getting any off day after my match because honestly i uh, personally don't like to uh, you know go out and visit anywhere before my matches because i always feel that my purpose to be here is my match so i have to uh, fulfill my purpose at first then whatever fun roaming around everything shopping i can do very easily even if i get if, if even if i get like 30 minutes or 1 hour it's, it's good enough for me but the main purpose has to be my match understood okay you're one of those serious types huh? serious and uh, what is it hard working types i guess <laughs> i have always heard that hard work mm-hmm. is and dedication gets you there so i uh, fully follow that um so uh i think it's been a it's been a month since uh, 2023 uh, i think today is jan today is 31st i think we are at the last day of the first month of the new year so um did you make any new year plans and uh, what have you planned for for this year do you have any crazy plans <laughs> um uh this time uh, at the time of uh, first jan i was at my home with my family uh, last year i couldn't be with them so this time i got a free time and i visited them and i spent the 31st december just being with my family <laughs> and it was very great and in case of plans no it's a very tight schedule this year for me because there are a lot of competitions ahead and it's the year before olympics so uh not as crazy plans as regular i guess it's just matches and training and it's very important <laughs> for paris understood so um what are you up to up to these days like i mean where are you right now and uh, how much uh, like is it um 
uh, what's going on you're, you're prepping you're only focused on the uh, the event for next year i think paris olympics no or is there something else happening that you're kind of very focused on so um right now i'm in hyderabad i'm training here and from tomorrow um i have my indian uh, camp at delhi so i'm going to travel tomorrow and till 14th of february we have our camp so it it's going to be a, a highly technical camp and uh, all the top shooters from india uh, will be there we all be, will be training together and it's always a great feeling to be there and um, then we have our matches uh, uh, in the march we have a world cup and after that we have our trials and then again world cup and world championship and everything Oh my god how many world cups and world championships i didn't know there were so many in cricket and all it comes only once in four years right so i'm a little world championship uh, is um, once in four years of course and world cups we have uh, four in one year in one year we have four world cups oh okay okay understood um tell me more about this camp no so like is it done by like you're you're in hyderabad but you're traveling to delhi i mean if you're traveling to delhi it must be an important camp is it done by i don't know your own academy or is it like a government sponsored thing or uh, what's the camp about how many time is it like a special camp is it like it's it's done by uh, the uh, it's sponsored for through sai and uh, national rifle association of india hosts it and uh, it's an important camp uh, there are two three camps in a year like this and also there are camps before uh, our team gets departed for a international event so all these camps are very important and because we have a foreign coach we have our indian chief coach and everyone all the supporting team all together being there and um, you know you just get to train with all the top shooters and it's very um competitive and also it's fun to be in the camp understood um are you happy with the i mean i don't want to ask you that i think uh, i think i'll know what you say anyways um let's go back a little um when did you first uh, when did you first uh, um what is that like how did you get to know about this uh, this um uh, uh this thing called uh, shooting or air rifle i'll tell you my exposure the only time i got to know about that you know the, that that there is a sport called uh, shooting is when i think uh, abhinav bindra won the gold medal and before that i had no idea i knew about volleyball and swimming and uh, i don't know kabaddi but uh, i never knew that there was this sport where um, you know you can shoot for you can shoot at things and uh, you can go to the olympics i didn't know about that so uh, how did uh, you uh how did you get to know was that someone in your family or was it someone in your neighborhood or in your own school uh no um actually it's the same for me uh, i got to know after abhinav bindra won the gold and um, i have always fantasized you know rifles and guns and bullets from watching them in the movie all the heroes used to use it so i always fantasized it but for the first time i got to know when abhinav bindra won the gold and i was like okay like i, I like guns and uh, bullets and everything and it's a sport and also like sports and by playing this we can go to olympics so i think i was uh, um 11 or uh, 11 years old at that time so it was a, like a uh, i instantly i liked it and um, Uh, it was like if abhinav bindra can do it so i think i can do it as well it's possible it's not like impossible to win a gold at olympics so from there i very much liked it and i i wanted to join but i i had no idea where to start so there was a friend uh, with me in my school and after a um, few months i got to know that uh, there is a shooting range um a few kilometers from my house and uh, i had no idea and uh, i told to my family that i i want to try my hands in shooting 
so they were very shocked at the at the first time because nobody from my family had this crazy thought of trying shooting and um, i was young at that time as well so and also shooting uh, everybody knows that it, it is expensive and uh, my family wasn't that uh, you know financially uh, sound so uh, it, it was like expensive for us so my mo- both mom and dad were like uh, it's a crazy thought uh, why do you want to try your hands in shooting yeah you you are already like in school and it's it's i don't know why you have this crazy sh- thought in your head i said i, I just want to try you know i've been a bindra one goal and uh, i want to see what i can do and i like sports so uh, let's try so my mom told that you first do good in studies this year then uh, we'll think about it so i i waited for one year so that i yeah. do good studies so then after one year um, my mom didn't say anything to me and then i asked my mom that you told me that if i do good you will take me to the shooting range so take me now i think i did good so it was not bad <laughs> so like take me to the shooting range so she was like yeah, okay if you are so interested even after one year uh, we can try so that's how i try in my i mean uh, i mean so my mom also promised me the same thing that if i study well she'll take me somewhere but uh, my marks were always so poor that i never got to go anywhere so that's the difference between your story and my story anyways um what is it uh, what is it about um guns or you know you mentioned you had this uh, um you like guns and you know whatever what is it about these guns that you find interesting i mean is it the the obvious thing for me that comes to my mind is just power right i mean when you hold a gun you just are very powerful in the sense that uh, uh, even it may be the world's strongest person in front of you with but with one one bullet you can kill the guy or you can finish the guy Uh, is it more about power for you that attracted you towards gun or um what is it about these things um i don't think that it's power i think it's uh, uh when i first shot a bullet uh uh like holding a rifle uh i more of it i i like the smell of the gunpowder i like the recoil i liked uh you know the concentration to you know you are aiming uh, a certain point which is like far away from you and by just pulling a trigger you are hitting that target so it was it was very um, it was very interesting to me you know how uh, the smell was so good and the uh, recoil the fe- feeling of holding a rifle it was very good it was not like a power but it was very interesting to me that's the first time i've heard uh, someone say that they they smell they like the smell of the so uh, every, what is that every the gun i don't know they love the smell of the gunpowder okay i have done i think I've, i was in the ncc for 2 years after which i got uh, i mean anyway this is a long story but uh, i have done some uh, what is that some shooting uh, but i but i don't know if it's uh, the same as uh, i don't know the guns that we get to use in ncc were the same ones that i think it's the um, same it's a point to that you guys do okay okay i mean I, i i hated my time at ncc actually i didn't like it at all i was waiting for those two years to end and uh, you know we would wear those shorts in the sun man it was it was it was, it was crazy it was insane so uh, yeah i don't miss that time but uh, yeah were you into about uh, hunting as well did you like hunting never never um not hunting because i always i'm very much of animal lover and i was never fond of that oh okay okay oh uh, that's fair you mentioned the uh, shooting like is an expensive game right um i the only i mean um I know for a fact that golf is expensive. I've heard that I've heard many people say golf is a very expensive game. I think I've also heard uh, people say tennis is a very expensive game. Uh, game. 
um can you tell me like um like like what is the expensive part in in um uh, in shooting like is it like getting access to the range or is it buying your own rifle or like uh, what's the expensive part well uh the scenario has changed because back in my days um getting a rifle was very difficult you know because um very few people had very good rifles okay and um, it was very hard to uh, have a second one because everybody was so caring for their rifle they never used to uh, want to share it okay and the academies also or the clubs back in those days they didn't have weapons so everybody has to buy their own weapon so buying my own weapon was expensive because one rif one top model of rifle uh it cost more than 2 lakhs so at oh first, my god are you serious yes so at first oh, when you're okay. just starting so uh, you just don't want to uh, spend that much at the very first right so what now has happened like india has so many academies so many clubs they have weapons so they are lending it out to the uh, shooters for for the begin uh, beginners and you can try your hand you can train you can even play uh, a state level uh, uh, pre nationals nationals as well and you can go on with that rifle right? so i didn't had that option i had to buy it on the very first time because uh, i didn't start it with the 0.22 rifle i started uh, with air rifle and not many people were doing air rifle and as i said that you know uh, the seniors they didn't used to um, lend their rifles because it's very expensive and it's very caring for them but nowadays like we have so many academies and they they are like uh, they have their basic weapons with them so that they can lend it out to the beginners so now the cost is not that much so when you have to like for an example if you have to uh, buy let's say for a tennis player if you have to buy your own racket ball and a tennis court for yourself it's going to be expensive but if you already have a tennis court and if you already have a coach for that tennis court and you just have to buy your own racket and shoes and ball i think it's not that expensive it's same for shooting if you have to I buy think I've, I think I've, your uh, own place to shoot because you have to have a 10 meter space and i think i've heard you give this example i think at as at that archtech interview i think i'm not sure Uh, I I I think I remember that. Anyways, um... and my dad, this is it's it's very true. Like, uh, if you have to really buy so much at the very first time, it's it's always expensive. But if you try your hand, you get to fall in love with the sport, and you all already get the basic support. You can go far ahead with that. So does that mean that uh, right now it's become a it's it's become a much more affordable sport? Is it is it no longer in the expensive uh, category? Um, I don't I I wouldn't say that. I mean yes, it's it's uh, affordable because if I if I tell you the number of shooters uh, we have in national level, you will be very shocked. Why? Right? uh we have approx 7000 shooters participating in national level with their with weapons and proper equipments not everybody has their own weapons of course but they have proper weapon and equipments and everything and they are the scores are go- going really good and high right at the moment and you're saying i'm actually a little confused so you're saying 7000 is a small number or you're saying that's a big number it's a big number it's it's only in uh, rifle category pistol is another big batch okay okay 
uh, which sport do you think i mean we mentioned uh, we spoke about golf and tennis but uh, can you tell me any other sport which you might know which is like very expensive i mean it's very difficult to i don't know like um play competitively because i don't know maybe the equipment is expensive or very difficult to get training etc um i think you know all these sports are expensive in somehow you know uh, definitely golf is expensive and i think um, you know i actually agree with that. I mean, also expensive if you look at uh, kabaddi right? I mean, kabaddi is not very i mean kabaddi you don't need much right you just need the uh, you need the court you don't need like proper equipment per se no no um, yes not they i, I don't think so kabaddi is going to be that expensive but also if you have to train really good and be in a very good level so you have to train in a proper court and you have to have a you know all the uh, gym support and proper nutrition and um you know physical fitness everything you have to measure it so there comes a lot of aspective in case of sports in any sport right right fair enough fair enough um what is your favorite rifle like is the rifle that you own is that your favorite rifle or are you is there a rifle that you want that maybe you will buy in a few years or i don't know man like is there something like that no it's a it's my own rifle it's uh, very dear to me i mean uh, it's very dear to me i bought it in 2015 and i'm still using it really 8 year almost 8 years oh is it that good yeah. it is because you know my favorite color is blue and the stock comes in blue color and it's very firm and it's it's a wood based stock and uh, it, it's just when I, when i when i visited a delhi range for the first time in 2013 that time i saw this rifle uh, with someone that shooter was using it and i just fell in love with that rifle i mean it's, it's it was very unique nobody was not nobody but very few people who are using that and it's like blue and it's um with wood stock and it's very classy look and like if i am some day if i'm going to buy a weapon this is going to be it uh, i wanted to know like um You told me that you you used the same rifle. You've been using your same favorite blue color rifle, I think, since twenty fifteen, um, which is kind of weird to me in the sense that uh, what is that? The example I can think of is like I don't know, like Sachin Tendulkar using his bat, the same bat for like six years. I don't know. It seems weird. So, are you like superstitious in any way that you know that you have to play with this rifle or? uh maybe some other superstitions like you know you have to get up at 9 or you have to eat that laddu in the morning or else you will not be perform well well no and no, uh, not like that but somehow i just feel that um, the my rifle is uh just lucky for me because in between i tried some different weapon but it didn't quite work out well so i don't have any thoughts of changing my this weapon the only thing we change is the action like the barrel you know the the uh, rifle can be broken in uh, two halves in mainly so one is the stock and one is the barrel so we change the barrel so that um it uh, we can shoot better but i keep my stock the same it's more about this stock not like barrel barrels okay i didn't understand much of it but uh, i know that there is a movie called uh, lock stock and barrel so i don't know if you know anyways that's a huge uh, digression but anyways yeah uh, okay were you exposed to any other sport or like i mean it was shooting the only, i mean i know you mentioned that you know you saw abhinav bindra getting that gold but uh, was there any other sport that you were into about which you wanted to get into or Uh, or was like shooting the only thing you caught on and then just continued pursuing no not really actually when i was a kid so i uh, i used to do swimming and karate as well 
so i was very fond of karate uh, swimming also i i liked it very much but i was more fond of karate so actually it was uh, a decision between either i will uh, start shooting or either i will uh, start um, karate sessions have you gotten in fights in class in school in school class yes somewhere yes i did i was not that good of a kid i, I was in that good of a kid in school i was back bencher and the notorious one one of them so but you would fight girls or boys with your karate skills Does it... <laughs> oh my if... god doesn't matter huh? okay yeah <laughs> i wouldn't want to get into a fight with you man like i think uh, yeah my weight is already yeah, i don't know 50 i think, I think so i think i am i'm so good right now that i was like <laughs> back in old days when i was scared with my friends and having fun and you know get into any kind of fights <laughs> do you still do karate or uh, have you stopped no no i have stopped um i mean it, it's been many many years i used to do it in, in school it was our uh like extra curricular activities so that time only i learned not for long years as well i i learned it for two years and that's it okay okay for regular fitness what do you do i mean do you do some weight training or um i don't know um cardio i don't know like what is your other do you have like a separate fitness regime yes yes we do so it's so combined with everything it it uh, does includes cardio it uh, weight training and strengthening everything uh, but in shooting we don't need much of muscle mass or huge big muscles so we just have to be fit flexible and it's more about endurance so that's what we train for why do you have to be flexible because um flexible in the sense not like you know you have to get some uh, flexible like gymnastic but uh, because uh, in our sport uh, the position we hold is very odd for um, human figure so it's very odd and it's very injury prone uh, for any human being so you have to be fit and flexible so that your uh, bones and ligaments they all stay in place if and after you train for 3 4 hours so i think there is uh, there are three types you know uh, just correct me if i'm wrong my knowledge in this is not very good so i think there is one standing rifle and i mean there's a standing position there's a kneeling position and then there's a sleeping type position no the am i correct or... yes you take part in all three or do you only focus on one my main is standing position but i do all the three okay did you did you choose to stick to standing because you are very good at it or was it i mean was it mostly luck or i don't know no because you know um the three position uh, it's a it's a event uh, the three position uh, event which is done in 50 meters so um in 50 meters the cost of Uh, ammo the ammunition cost and the rifle cost is uh, much more higher than a uh, uh, air rifle which is my main event which is only done in standing so back in those days where i, I had to decide which even to try which event i should start so it was very easy for us to decide because air rifle and air pellets and everything was uh, less costly for us so i started with air rifle and it just clicked right when did you start what how old were you uh, you were 14 no i um how much how old were you when you started all this you were, were you 14 you're smiling when i started when i first tried shooting i was 13 years old and uh, the then when i played my first state competition i was 14 years old you were 40 you know when you you when you played your first state championship i was 14 years old okay okay and uh, i know i think i know that you stopped your studies at one point um uh, just to focus on i think um 
uh, just to focus on shooting if i'm not wrong so when did you like when did you make that call to kind of stop well uh, it, it was uh, on a very last moment actually because i made that call on uh, 2018 february i guess because um, i i got selected for commonwealth games at very last moment i had no idea that i i i will be selected for it um, but i i did and um, i had my 12 boards at the same time as the commonwealth so it was just um, me and my parents and my coaches were like it's very less time that you have to uh, decide but right now you have to decide if you want to play commonwealth games or if you want to uh, give your board exams so it was very clear you couldn't to me. Uh, i mean you couldn't you couldn't tell the commonwealth people that you know i have my boards and can you postpone the commonwealth games for 2 3 months you couldn't ask that huh? <laughs> absolutely not it's it's a commonwealth games it's a the games for the uh, so many countries i mean they won't be doing that for uh only one athlete who has their exams okay okay i'm sorry that is a joke i think anyways yeah. um okay so uh all right so that's why you decided to like um yeah, so move my from your parents career. were very supportive as like, they were like that's not even a question no thoughts to put you have, we all know that you are going to go for the commonwealth games and it's a it's a lifetime opportunity and it's it's a all of our dreams are going to come true and you will go to play for the commonwealth exams will see later studies can always happen but this is an opportunity and you have earned it so you should go what did you take in 11th and 12th what was your stream you took science or commerce or arts no. or i don't know uh, that's not that fond of studies understood um will you go back to um after 12th have you done i mean have you given your 12th um or yes, are yes. you still uh, waiting to no i i cleared my 12th and i'm currently in uh, college as well giving my first year you're in your first year huh? yeah what are you studying Um, I'm studying uh, BA honors in education with Adams University from Kolkata. Do you, I mean, do you like studying? I mean, uh, do you like going to college, or do you go to college, or is it mostly like uh, online? Oh, no, I, I uh, no, I can't, and I don't have the time to go to college. But sometimes I have to for a few of the exams or something. But mainly, I do it online. I feel like in any person's life, right? Like I mean, uh, what is that? I think college life is like one of their uh, best years. They generally, you know, make a lot of friends and uh, uh, people. You know, when they go out, they generally share college stories. You know, he did this, she did this, and uh, I went there, she went there. Um, do you feel left out, or do you feel like you know? Uh, I also want a like a normal college life, and you know, want to stay out till two a.m. and uh, go to class at nine a.m. and all that. Do you feel that? well maybe sometimes because uh, i mean yes uh, you just have the time to go to college once in your life and uh, uh, there are a few things to miss out but at the same time uh, i know what i am sacrificing for and uh, i do have uh, the stories to tell others uh of my camp days and my international tournament days which i am sure is uh same level of interest interesting for the college life yeah yeah i think uh, your stories will be better than your stories are definitely better than my college life stories that that is for sure uh, there is no doubt but uh yeah um uh, what are the other sacrifices i mean um generally like i think one we spoke of you know uh, just normal life whatever the normal life in general is i think uh, athletes have to kind of give up because you know they have a lot of practice to do what other things that you can think of which you kind of felt you know um fuck man like i i wanted to do this but because of my training i couldn't do it or i have to skip it for now are there any other sacrifices maybe um 
not only in like time but also maybe money wise or or time or just life wise um, do you think yeah um, uh, there are uh, plenty i guess there is small things there are big things as well um few of those are i mean definitely um, i miss hanging out with my school friends which i could have done maybe much more if i would have stayed and went to school regularly but uh during uh, class 9 10 and 11 12 i couldn't go to school much uh because of my training and uh, there were uh, you know school exertion and uh, um outings and picnics and everything where every friends went and they had fun and everything but i had to go to my training and do my training so i miss those days uh mostly and um, there are other things like you know um uh, where my family went for some occasion or something but i have my training and i have to train i have to sleep early because i have few days later i have to uh, play my match and have to be in my best shape uh, i have to um, you know maintain my diet and eat healthy where uh my family members or the friends are having uh, the lovely food which i am very much willing to have but i just can't so yeah, there is this uh, small things and big things as well so yeah i think this go all what is that level. food that you you know a lot food oh, i am i'm a big time foodie and <laughs> um i can have anything <laughs> to be very honest i mean mostly i like no, what, what uh, that you want to have but you can't have because you're training sorry what is it that you want to have but you know you mentioned uh, your family members eating some fancy food but because of your diet or training you're not allowed to have what is that food that you can't have because of your training burger or pizza uh, not, uh, pizza definitely uh, not much fan of burger but definitely pizza uh, sometimes biryani and um, you know outside food also puchka like golgappa puchka and uh, bro that is anyway not healthy bro so it's i think it's a good thing they're not having that i know but i don't think that anyone can resist puchka i mean it's so delicious <laughs> Kushka is biryani without the chicken, right? Or without it's just the rice, right? No, Kushka is Golgappa, but in Kolkata. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. I think uh, I'm talking. Anyways, yeah. Um, so, what do you eat then? I mean, if you're not allowed to eat I, biryani, also if you're not allowed to eat, then what, what do you eat? Leaves, or uh, what? <laughs> Guru, <laughs> um, um, all the. <laughs> Uh, uh like you know we have to eat like um home cooked healthy food uh, like dal chawal rajma chicken fish egg um all the good amount of nutrients and protein and everything uh, all the leafy vegetables uh fruits everything like those thing which is very much healthy for you and which everybody should have but yeah we have to have it regularly almost one cheat day is okay 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 so now that you know like you know now that you know um how like like life of an athlete right like let's say now you you're into shooting and you know you have a certain lifestyle you mentioned the sacrifice and all that so if you have kids um you're very young now um but let's say in 10 years or i don't know man whenever you want to have kids if you want to have kids uh so whenever you do and let's say you do have kids um will you also um you know maybe um tell them to get into sports or you will you know you'll say i suffered enough but uh, maybe you can get into i don't know ca or i don't know become a lawyer or something like that i don't know well uh i would definitely like encourage them to play sports 
not professionally it, it's going to be their choice which one they are liking if they want to take it to a professional level but i think sports is very healthy for uh, every kids and for everyone so definitely i will encourage them to you know just go and play not rather than to be with phone or any electronic devices like what's happening nowadays with every kids so i will definitely encourage them to go out and play all kind of sports whichever they like and um, after that if they want to take it to a professional level they can and if they want to go to academic side or any other side they are like they will be free to choose their path how many hours do you use your phone every day okay so um if i have my training days then it it depends because you know it's not like i always use my phone uh in hand it's more been used for uh listening to music so approx 4 hours i guess that's a lot actually i mean i thought you will say i don't know half an hour or one hour but uh, i was ex- yeah but, uh, i used to you don't think that's a lot but uh, nowadays like there are so many things that it not not like for watching movies or something but either i have to send a mail or update a form or something and like that and mainly as i said that uh, i most of the time i listen to music so my youtube is always open oh oh you don't have premium <laughs> you should get premium man premium is much better i will i will get but many i have told to use spotify but i always prefer youtube somehow No, even if you get Spotify, if you don't pay, you'll have to listen yes, to the ads uh, and listen to an ad every. And uh, Spotify ads are very annoying, man. Um, I'm a Spotify user, so they are very. Bad. <laughs> Now, before um, you see, th- uh, I think after your twelfth, I think you didn't give your exams, but I think before that, you were managing both your. Uh, you are managing both your uh, academics and uh, your shooting no yes so uh, can you, can you walk me through like a typical day like what time would you wake up and uh, do you have to did you have practice in the morning and uh, did you have practice in the evening how is it for you so uh, i had my practice in the evening because uh, there were day uh, not every day i i could manage you know both school and training so uh, if uh, if a day i have both my school and training then it would be like i used to wake up uh, around 6 i guess and then uh, i had my bus at uh, uh, 7 and uh, from 8 8:30 uh, my class is to start and it is to end at 3 and from there i used to uh, take train and go to kolkata uh and from there take a bus and then go to salt lake and there i used to train so it used to be around from 5:30 or if i reach before that then then very good but around 5:30 is just to start and then it was to end uh pretty late and because we used to travel by bus and train and everything so i used to come home around i guess 11 at night 11 11 that night so so yeah um what i want to ask you is uh, i think a couple of years back you went on ztv i think if i'm not wrong and uh, i i watched that interview of yours i don't know if you remember at the end of the interview the lady goes uh, when you answered your, you know you were traveling you were taking the buses and you were taking the bus and you were taking the train and then the lady goes why don't you have a two wheeler and then you answered uh, you answered something and then um, she goes uh, uh, but but why why haven't you still bought a two wheeler did you not feel like asking her you know why don't you buy me a two wheeler no i mean i <laughs> uh, not really because i do go through um, so many questions uh, which uh, i mean it's uh, sometimes it's relevant sometimes it's not but 
you know it, it's okay i don't feel to ask them back <laughs> it's just i just answer and i just feel funny at the moment so it's okay okay i was watching that interview and i was just like um you know um may i don't know man maybe in the moment it's uh, it's you know you sometimes doesn't matter anyways i'm i'm, I'm like this um i mean uh, you know athletes uh, they are um, interpreted in a, a wrong way so many times uh, if i would have said something at that point uh, i might uh, you know the audience might have said that okay she is being rude she is being something uh, you know uh, egoistic or she has an attitude or something so it's uh, no point i mean if i if i feel something which is very wrong i i would definitely say it but it's something very uh, like normal and it's okay i don't it's okay are you are you i mean uh see obviously i'm being very polite now and you're also being very polite uh himali what is that himali is also on the call yeah. she doesn't talk but i mean it, when she talks she's also very polite yeah. so uh but once the call is over i mean are you generally this polite or are you like in nature are you a little arrogant and little, you know do you have an attitude or like well, i know, can't speak or how is it that's to be said i can't speak for myself but um i try and i love to be as grounded as possible because um i have seen people who has few arrogant behaviors or some attitudes um and i personally don't like them so i i don't think that i'm going to do the same uh so i very much like to be grounded and humble as possible Uh, i know there is yet to you know uh, learn so many things uh, and i learn from my senior athletes uh, uh, or my coaches and everyone whomever i meet and uh, you know how to stay hum- humble and uh, as grounded uh, and i mean few of them i very much like that is uh, noni and sachin tendulkar both of them especially Dhoni, he is so humble and he is so grounded, and it's, uh, I mean, definitely an inspiration of being such a successful athlete, and still he is so ground to the earth. I mean, that's an amazing thing. So I would definitely would love to learn that rather than being the opposite. I think you're pretty humble man. Uh okay, but uh, anyways, you you say you have to learn so let's see. Um what about uh how was your covid like? I mean, during covid, uh, how did you kind of uh, was it a big disruption for you or did you just go to did you go to practice come back? It was not a big deal. No, no, it was it was very uh, uh not a not at all a great time for me because uh, definitely I I wasn't training at that time. Uh it was not possible to go out and uh, um i i just had my weapon with me and everything but you know training at home is in the same as training in the range so i had to stay home and uh, i did utilize few times to like to be with the family and uh, uh, enjoy my time with them but of course i missed the my routine and it was all very different and it took time for me to get back and get into my zone again and um, also i had uh, one injury in my knee uh, before that but during the covid i couldn't got my treatment as well so i had to wait until the covid got over and i, I went out and i done my treatment for my knee done all the rehabs and everything so yeah so it took it was not a great time it, it took time for me to get out of the covid zone and uh, go through the covid zone do you think you're out of the whatever the covid zone is do you think you're out of it or do you still have like right. some baggage i i think i'm out of it i mean the last year was very much productive and um, uh, very competitive for me and i would say that 
it was um, that's what i needed you know a, a good amount of training and competition and uh, um, exposure ba- i mean back to the athlete life that's what i needed and it was done you are 21 i think now 21 or 22 um um you're 22 okay um first of all you were born in th- b- before uh, i think you were born in the year 2000 yeah. so if you live to be a 100 you will die in 2100 yeah <laughs> maybe i don't know i am not planning to live till 100 <laughs> how long would you like to live you don't want to live till 100 huh? uh, no uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's so long years <laughs> I mean, what I will do in my hundreds? I won't be able to do much. But I mean, yeah. So I would, I would say around eighties is fine. Good to. So two thousand eighty, you will die. Yeah, good. Not bad. Okay, okay. Um, what would you? I mean, uh, you're twenty two, as we mentioned. Uh, so when you're forty, right? Which is uh, still twenty years, I think. Still twenty years on. Mm-hmm. What would you like to do when you are forty, forty, forty-five? Well, I would definitely love to have one, two Olympic medals in my gallery, and um, and few world championship medals and lots of World Cup medals with me. And uh, after that, I don't know. We'll see later. I haven't planned for that. <laughs> What I'm gonna do? Two gold are enough. Two two gold two gold medals are enough. Two Olympic golds. Yes, I guess. If it is two Olympic gold, I'm I'm happy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But uh, is there Olympic a... participation? I think that will make me much more happy. Like two gold medals. You have another gold Olympics. So, uh, for have you qualified for the twenty four Olympics or? No, um, it's in the process. So this year uh, there are competitions where we can win uh, Olympic quota. So I'm looking forward to that. And then in twenty twenty three there will be Olympic trials for the top athletes in uh, air rifle and fifty meter uh, events. So from there the best athlete will will be scoring good. in the trials they will get the chance to go to olympics in 2024 understood but you're hopeful you will you're hopeful you'll make it to 24 i am hopeful and i'm working for it understood is there any tournament that you really wanted to participate in but you didn't qualify for whatever reason asian games yes which year was it last year is it or uh the last year to got postponed it's it's going to be happening this year so the last year i got selected but it got postponed uh, in 2018 the asian games i i didn't got selected i i came third so only the top two shooters goes for the games so yeah i'm i'm looking forward for the this year's asian games but like why why is asian games so special why did you like like why was it that you wanted to go so badly uh i for me i mean there is this two competition which is olympic games and asian games in which i haven't yet participated and other than that i have uh, participated in almost every competition like world cups world championship and uh, asian championship not uh Asian Championship also, I am yet to participate. Actually, it was Asian Egg and Championship I participated. So yeah, three games, uh, three competition I haven't uh, yet participated. That is Asian Games, Asian Championship, and Olympic Games. Other than that, I have participated in almost every one. Understood. So, um, what like I mean, um, I have heard you say this before, so I'm just going to repeat myself. Mm-hmm. which is um apparently um playing sports also teaches you some life lessons so what uh, life lessons have you learned by playing the game of shooting 
uh i one thing i would say that is how to be uh, patient enough in your life i mean patience is such a big key for everything to because i mean if you are patient enough for uh, and patiently work to your goal you can achieve anything you want you know because everyone nowadays are very hard working they are so so much of talent and uh, so many um, you know paths to succeed so but the i think the only thing we all are yet to learn is being patient enough to reach our goal because we work we work and we, uh, we all expect like uh, we want the result right now why isn't happening i am working so hard and but it's still not showing it's all about being patient enough and keep on doing the work and not asking for the result or not looking out for the result so i think one of it is this uh, i learned and um i'm still learning and i'm still um, you know on the process of um, i'm still on the process myself that how patient i can be to reach my goal how do you like um um how do i put this uh, your anger right like how does it come out <laughs> uh, when i get angry yeah <laughs> good question i mean yeah i <laughs> it's a if i'm angry it depends on what i am angry about but if i am angry which is somehow related to my um training or something or if i i mean if my training isn't going that well or some competition went bad so i just you know the next day or uh, that day only i just go back to the lane and i pick up my weapon and i focus and i just start shooting so it's it's uh, uh, for me it works very well and uh, uh, to channelize my anger to productiveness uh, so i i think I don't know how to explain that, but I just I, I just channelize my anger to being productive and focused on my game, rather than you know just wasting my mood and wasting hours of just being angry. Why not being productive? Understood. Um, I think on that note, uh, Miss Mehuli Ghosh, yeah. uh, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, it was wonderful having you. Thank you so much. Thank you.